Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Jesper. I'm a sixth year medical student currently doing my last year. And in this video, I'm going to talk about primary immunodeficiency disorders with a focus on pediatric patients. This is part two following my previous video where I talked about the INET as well as the adaptive immune system. If you haven't seen that video yet, I suggest that you take a look at it since it's a good concept to understand. Immunodeficiency disease results from failure or absence of one or more components or elements of the immune system. Primary immunodeficiency disorders. This is a term that refers to different diseases caused by intrinsic defects in cells of the immune system. These are often genetically determined and that's why the term inborn errors of immunity can also be used. Genetically speaking, these disorders are present at birth, but the age of which the disease will manifest or be expressed can vary, as we will see. However, many defects can be diagnosed at birth or shortly after. The most common type of primary immunodeficiency disorders that are diagnosed are of B cells. Therefore, we can also say they are antibody deficiencies since the B cells can mature into plasma cells and secrete antibodies, which we talked about in the previous video. The B cell immunodeficiency disorders are characterized by frequent recurring respiratory tract infections from encapsulated bacteria such as Streptococcus pneumonia as well as Haemophilus influenza. They can often lead to pyogenic infections Pyogenic, meaning that they give rise to the formation of pus. The patient's serum usually has some sort of antibody deficiency, but may also have normal quantity of antibodies on tests, but the function is often then reduced. Some important diseases that fall into the category of B-cell primary immunodeficiencies are X-linked agammaglobulinemia, IgA and IgG deficiency, immunodeficiency with increased IgM, common variable immunodeficiency, as well as transient hypogammaglobulinemia. We will talk shortly about all of them. So let's start with X-linked agammaglobulinemia. Since this one was one of the first described primary immunodeficiencies, we'll start with this one. It is also referred to Bruton's disease, since it was discovered in 1952 by Ogden Bruton. X-linked agammaglobulinemia is a primary immunodeficiency that is due to a gene mutation on the X chromosome, hence X-linked agammaglobulinemia. This gene normally encodes Bruton tyrosine kinase, and this tyrosine kinase is important for the development and maturation of B cells. So patients with this disease present with a lack of B cells and therefore also a lack of antibodies. Since it is X-linked, boys are primarily affected. Women can be carriers but are rarely really affected by the disease. The disease usually presents when an infant boy is a couple of months old. This is because the first month of life the infant will have protection from maternal antibodies that they receive before birth from their mother. Then, when these antibodies fade, as the first weeks to months pass, the infant gradually becomes more and more susceptible to infections. Typical infections are respiratory infections like pneumonias and bronchitis. Ear infections can also take place like otitis, and infections that are causing diarrhea, so infections of the GI tract. The patients can be treated using immunoglobulin replacement therapy, which is lifelong, as well as antibiotics for active infections when needed, or prophylactically if they are prone to getting reoccurring infections. With treatment, patients can grow to live full lives, so that's amazing. Let's recap the most important things for X-linked agammaglobulinemia because it's an important disease. It's due to the gene defect on X chromosome. That gene encodes this Bruton tyrosine kinase, which when deficient 
leads to deficiency of B cells and antibodies. Boys are therefore primarily affected and they are susceptible to pneumonia, otitis and GI infections with bacteria that cause pyogenic infections. Treatment is with immunoglobulin replacement therapy as well as antibiotics. The next primary immunodeficiency we will talk about is IgA deficiency. And this is a relatively common primary immunodeficiency disorder within the Caucasian population. And as much as 1 in 700 individuals might have this defect within this population. The disease is inherited and it's associated with defects on chromosomes 18, 14 and 6. There is a failure of terminal differentiation of B cells. The diagnosis is made by seeing undetectable levels of immunoglobulin A, while other immunoglobulin classes may be completely normal. So most of the patients with IgA deficiency have few complaints, but some patients may be affected by frequent infections, especially those of pyogenic infections. In these individuals, antibiotics to treat active infection is used. About 20% of the patients with IgA deficiency also have deficiency of the antibodies IgG2 and IgG4. These are subtypes of immunoglobulin G antibodies. These patients are then at a higher risk of getting frequent infections and a more active disease. The next we will talk about is IgG deficiencies. This is when a patient are deficient in IgG antibodies. So important to note that there are five major types of antibodies. There's the M, A, G, D, E. I usually remember MAGD. Yeah. So the IgG antibodies are the most common type. And the IgG antibodies exist also as four subclasses. IgG 1, 2, 3, and 4. Patients may have a subclass deficiency even if the total number of IgGs are normal. The reason for the defect is thought to be genetic, but the mechanism is not clear. These patients are also more prone to pyogenic infections, and in patients with severe and reoccurring infections, antibiotics can be given prophylactically and immunoglobulin replacement therapy may be beneficial. The next disease we will talk about of the primary immunodeficiency disorders is called immunodeficiency with increased IgM. It's also called immunodeficiency with hyper IgM. This is a disease in which patients are with excess amounts of IgM antibodies. They however are deficient in IgG and in IgA antibodies. What happens is that in these patients the B cells cannot make the switch from immunoglobulin M to immunoglobulin G and E. So let me explain. Normally in response to an infection the B cells first produce IgM antibodies and then later switch to produce IgG and IgE antibodies which have different roles. However here this process is affected and the patient ends up with high IgM and low IgG and IgE antibodies. There are different forms of immunodeficiency with increased or hyper IgM. However, in the most common form, the defect is found on the X chromosome. The consequence of this disease is that the patients are susceptible to recurring bacterial infection. They also can be at increased risk of developing cancers such as lymphoproliferative disorders and also various autoimmune diseases. The diagnosis of these patients is made from clinical testing of the blood and the levels of immunoglobulins are checked as well as the subtypes, so the IgM especially, IgA and IgG. Flow cytometry is also used to investigate biomarkers of the cell surface which can indicate a problem and in immunodeficiency with increased IgM there's a decreased expression of CD40 ligand protein of the cell surface and this is one of those indicators that we can check with flow cytometry. Further molecular genetic testing can be made to confirm a diagnosis. Patients will receive regular immunoglobulin replacement therapy 
in case of frequent opportunistic infections. The patients may also receive then prophylactic antibiotic therapy. Next one we will talk about common variable immunodeficiency disorder. And this type of primary immunodeficiency is often diagnosed in adults, unlike the other diseases that we talked about previously, which are often discovered early in pediatric patients. The reason for this is that common variable immunodeficiency most often presents in the second or third decade of life or even later. However, children may also be affected. The cause is unknown, however, it is thought to be linked to IgA deficiency. And there are cases where Epstein-Barr virus, which is the virus that causes mononucleosis, may have triggered common variable immunodeficiency later in life for certain patients. Clinically, the patients present with low levels of IgA, IgG, and IgM. The patients are then susceptible to pyogenic infections, and some patients also develop autoimmune diseases. And there seems to be an increased risk for the development of pernicious anemia in these patients. Therapy is done with immunoglobulin replacement therapy and with antibiotics in case of active bacterial infections. The last primary immunodeficiency disorder that I will discuss is transient hypogamma globulinemia. This disorder presents in infants in which there is a delay of normal IgG synthesis. Healthy infants normally are protected by maternal IgGs. By three months of age, however, they synthesize their own IgGs. But in the patients with transient hypogammoglobulinemia, the intrinsic IgG synthesis might be delayed by as long as several years. And until then, they are susceptible to infections. It is called transient because it's not a permanent illness. At some point, most of the children start producing their own IgGs. However, the time it takes is individual. The treatment depends on the severity of symptoms. Mild cases may be left untreated with clinical observation and supportive counseling. And in severe cases, immunoglobulin replacement therapy can be given. According to the Immune Deficiency Foundation, live viral vaccines such as the ones against measles, mumps, rubella, varicella and rotavirus should be postponed until the pediatric patient has sufficient intrinsic production of IgGs. So that was it for this video. Thank you for watching. If it helped you, I would be really glad if you could subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.